Hey, this is Ken Finnett at Capital Advantage Tuning. It's my job to get you past the Series 6 exam, the Series 7 exam, and the SIE exam. So I've done a mutual event video. I'll try to try to put it up here somewhere. I never know what side I'm going to do it on. So I'll just point up here. But I, this one is going to be more about when you enter it, like so you understand the basics of it. I've done the big, or the whole 45-minute video on mutual funds and annuities. It's in my Series 7 playlist. But this is going to be more about like understanding the NAV a little bit better. And when you put money in, what happens, why you don't change the NAV when you buy and sell. Because we do know that there's only two things that affect the NAV. The assets going up and down in the fund or them sending out distributions of capital gains or income. So let's get into it. So when you invest in a mutual fund, what happens is you're putting money in and you're buying it at an open-end fund, if you want to call it. You're actually putting money into the fund. You're buying it from the fund or the sponsor and they're creating more shares for you. So that fund actually gets bigger. We'll show it on the screen. I just want to make sure we understand that, that that's what's going on. And that's different than the way a closed-end fund is because a closed-end fund, actually you're buying from other people, right? They issue a set number of shares and then those shares trade on the exchange and you're buying them from other people. So let's get into it. So I'm going to start with small numbers. So let's say we have our package product, right? So this is our mutual fund. This is a mutual fund company, open end, whatever you want to call it. And we have stocks and bonds in there. You know, stocks, we'll say we have like, you know, um, Tesla, uh, you know, FedEx, right? FedEx, you know, Ford, GM, Apple, right? Stuff like that. All these stocks are in there. They're all in there. And remember, and this, what happens is, is that these guys, so we have an actual manager, like an investment advisor, the next test you take, um, maybe, who's going to be actively managing, buying and selling the securities up and down, moving them in there. And that's, you're going to pay management fees and expense ratio and all that stuff for this. But this is a, there's a person or a team managing this portfolio and trying to do better than the market. So it's going to go up and down based on that. Okay. So the value of all this shit is going to affect the value of the fund. But let's just understand that this is all in here. This is all these securities are held in this package. It's a packaged product and boom. Okay. So it's a pooled investment. If you want to call it. let's say there's a hundred thousand dollars worth of securities in there. Again, I'm using small numbers because I'm a fucking idiot. Okay. And I can't do big numbers. It just hurts me. Okay. So let's say my mind just explodes. So let's say I have $100,000 of securities in the fund. It doesn't matter if it's cash or not, because it's still the package, right? So remember, when you're buying this, you're not buying each of these securities, right? You're like You're not buying the, each of these securities individual. You're buying this, which owns all of these. So if these go up, the box goes up, right? So if the securities go up, then the box goes up in value. If the securities go down, the box go down. The product goes down. So it's worth more and less because you're owning... Remember, you're owning this, not each specific security in here. Okay. Now we have 100 grand sitting in the account. That's how much is in there, whether it's cash, securities, bonds, whatever it is, doesn't matter. And let's say we have 100, again, I'm using easy numbers because I'm an idiot. Say you have 100,000 shares outstanding right now. Okay. Now here's what happens. Okay. Um, so again, $100,000 fund, just is the minimum anyway, right? 100,000 shares. So now here's what happens when they divide, figure out, I can't stutter. I'm stuttering my ass off. Okay. When, because there's no script, I'm just fucking ranting. Right. So if we have a hundred thousand dollars of value in the fund and that's when you have to figure out NAV, you're going to take the assets minus the liabilities divided by the number of shares, but I'm saying it's worth a hundred right now. And you're going to divide it by that. Now, here's the thing though. They do it at the end of the day. They don't do it during the day because here's why. If you go to buy more shares, okay, if you go to buy shares, what's going to happen is they're going to create more shares for you. So they have to account for that. There's more shares and bigger fund. We're going to get into that. So right now, this would be $100,000 divided by 100,000 shares. We'll say the NAV is going to be 100,000 divided by 100. NAV is $1 a share. Then let's say the assets go up. Let's say the assets go up to like 200,000. And nothing's changed. No, it's the middle of the day. Say so the market just went fucking nuts. So now this would be 200 divided by 100. So the NAV would be $2. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Now let's use a bigger number just so we can have it. Let's say the actual fund is not a period. I keep hitting period one. There you go. $1 million worth. Okay. So now 1 million. Does that look right? Yeah, that's fine. 1 million divided by 100 grand. That's going to be, should be 10 if I do my math right. So the NAV is 10 bucks. 
Boom, there we are. So now what we're trying to do is say, okay, what happens when you buy into it? Why do you buying it not affect the NAV? Where everything else it does, right? When you're buying stock, it prices the price up. When you're selling it, it pushes the price down. Now, in reality, us doing it, not moving the fucking needle. Us buying your 80, 200, 400 shares isn't going to do shit. But it's when like a hedge fund or somebody big buys like a ton of shares, that would change it. Okay, so remember, when you're buying the mutual fund, open end shares, you're buying it from the actual fund or the sponsor. Okay, remember that you're buying it from the fund or the sponsor. You're basically buying a Fidelity or someone like a Schwab who's sponsored by them. Now, who has a range with them? So now when you're going to buy in, you're going to say, oh, I don't want to buy a thousand shares. You're going to say, oh, I want to buy this much money, put this much money into it, and then tell me how many shares I get. And remember, they actually calculate it at the end of the day. So you don't know what you're getting, but we're going to pretend that it works out. So here's the thing you're going to put in, let's say we have an eight and a half percent sales charge. Okay. That's the max 8.5% sales charge, right? 8.5% sales charge. That is the max. Okay. That is the max sales charge we can do. Okay, it, this just you can't do any higher than that. So we're going to say if we put in 10,928. Now, remember, the sales charge comes out of your money. So you're going to subtract eight and a half percent from this to find out how much is actually going into the fund. You don't have to do this. But I'm just saying that sometimes you get a question. If you put a thousand dollars in and you pay a two percent sales charge, you're paying 20 bucks. So you're only putting 980. Right. So that's right. Thousand that works. Right. OK. So the point is. If I want to buy $10,000 worth of stocks, okay, of the mutual fund, I have to put in 8.5% of the big number, which is a weird concept, right? So I'm taking, I have to put in 8.5% of this. So the way I figure it out is you go, okay, $10,000 divided by 100 minus the sales charge, 0.915. And that would give me the 10,928. That tells me, that I have, I get to invest ten thousand dollars into the into the mutual fund. Now, you won't have to do this, but you may have to do this one. Uh, we'll get to why this 0.915 works. We'll do it in a minute. So just trust me that it works for now. So I'm going to put in ten thousand nine hundred twenty eight dollars, pay my eight and a half percent, which is nine hundred twenty eight dollars, and that means I'm putting actually investing ten thousand dollars into the fund. Because remember, the NAV, the sales charge, is out of your total amount. The POP, right? To what you totally put in. So you take that out of your thing. You take out eight and a half percent of what you put in, and that in this case it's going to leave you ten grand. You will not have to do that math, but you might have to do a different one, which I'll show you now. If you were to take ten thousand dollars and buy buy it, and the NAV is ten because they calculated at the end of the day because they counted all the people redeeming and buying and all that. But let's say it's still ten bucks. So you're going to buy ten thousand dollars worth of a ten dollar NAV. That means you're going to get 1,000 shares because that's 1,000 divided by 10. Okay. So, okay. That means now what happens is they create new shares for you. They're going to create 1,000 shares. So there was 100,000 shares outstanding. Now it's 101. Now remember, the numbers are way bigger than this, but I have to do this because I'm an idiot. But then they also put $10,000 into here. So that's going to be, hope I can do the math right, it's going to be. One million and ten thousand dollars in the fund because they're buying shares. So you're ten grand. So this nine hundred twenty eight goes into the salesperson's pocket, whatever. The ten grand goes into the fund. So there's now one million and ten thousand dollars in this fund, and they buy the securities. So now let's figure out what the NAV is because we have more shares, and the fund's bigger. So let's do the math. One o one o o o o divided by one o one o o o is ten dollars so it doesn't affect okay so that's the whole point here is that because when you buy into the fund the fund is getting bigger right so that's why you can't like oh no so what happens is if you get into the fund the fund gets bigger and then they issue more shares so they both go up proportionally so you're not actually like owning the whole thing okay so it's not like you can buy a bunch of shares and increase your percentage i mean you can it does but it gets bigger along with you so you're not competing with other people so the point is, as you buy shares, they're creating new ones, okay? So as you buy shares, they create new ones for you. So that makes sense. We okay with that? And again, I used to do it without the sales charge percent in, but I decided it can kill two birds with one stone. Now, when you redeem, you sell it at the NAV, no sales charge. So let's say you want to get out of this 10,000. Now, let's say the NAV hasn't changed, just to make it easier. Because again, I'm an idiot. 
ten, you're going to sell that. You're going to redeem the ten thousand, and you're not going to pay a sales charge. You already did, you know, unless it's a B shares or something like that. But I covered that in my other video, and I'll put that up here. Um, the A, B, C different classes. So when you redeem, you're going to sell it out at ten bucks. So you're going to sell your thousand shares, and what they do is they destroy them. Boom, and then the ten thousand they redeem the money it comes out. It goes back to zero, and there you go, and it stays at ten dollars. So when you buy shares into the fund, it doesn't change the NAV. And when you sell it, it doesn't change the NAV either because buying and selling doesn't change it. The only thing that changes the NAV is the assets in the fund going up and down. If this goes up or you know, to 2 million or down to 500,000 or whatever it is, that'll change it. Or if they kick out dividends. So if they pay out like $1,000 in dividends, well, then this will go down to reflect that. That you don't know what the NAV is until the end of the day. They calculate it on a forward basis, okay? On a forward basis. So, so is it forward basis? I guess it is. It's fine. So it's on a forward basis. It's calculated. So they calculate it at the end of the day at 4 p.m., 4.15 around. And they base it on how many people are buying and how many people are selling. And then where the assets are trading. And then that's how they come up with the NAV. So when you place the order, again, like I said before, you don't say I want to buy 1,000 shares. You say I want to buy 10,000 and change. And then it comes out, and then your sales charge comes out of that, and then that leaves you over. Now, remember, I have the video before showing the different share classes and how that goes. Now, let's pretend this is what they call a closed end, okay? Closed end. Now, the reason that's different is that what happens is once they, they build the portfolio, and let's just say they issue a set number of shares, 100,000, they do not, they do not issue anymore. So if you want to buy shares, you're not buying them from the fund or the sponsor. You're buying them from other people. So they actually start trading on the stock exchange or over the counter, whatever it is. Now, open end funds only issue common shares. That's it. Close end can actually, it's just a company. It can issue stock, it can issue common stock, can issue preferred, can issue bonds. You can buy it on margin. You can sell it short. Because when this 100,000 shares, once it's issued, it's in people's hands. And the only way to buy the shares is to buy them from someone else. So let's say it's say the NAV is 10. Maybe the bid will be, I don't know, 9.8, right? And then the offer will be, oh, let me do it the right way so it looks right. Bid 9.80. Oh, ask 10.02. Oh, okay. So here's a bid and the ask. This is where people are willing to buy it. And this is where people want to sell. We know the bid ask. I'll put the BA up here. But that's literally how they trade, okay? So if you want to buy shares right now, you have to buy them at a 10.02. But if you own the shares, you, you know what? Let me get out of this stupid thing. I can sell them at 9.80. You can try to do better in the middle, but right now, this is where it is. You buy at the ask, you sell at the bid, and then they add a commission, okay? So make sure you don't get tricked by that, okay? So if you buy closed-end funds or even ETFs, you buy it at the ask plus a commission or you sell it at the bid and they subtract a commission, meaning they charge you, you get less. If you buy an open end, you're buying it at the POP, which we'll get into, and then they don't add anything on top of that because the sales charge is in there. So again, these things trade. Now, they're not more liquid. ETFs are technically more liquid than open end because in the middle of the day, you can get out of it. So like, look, lately, the market goes up and then down. It goes all over the place. So in this case, if you buy a mutual fund and you say, you know what? I want to buy, I want to sell my mutual fund out because I think the market's up. It could turn in the middle of the day and then you end up getting less than you expected because they don't price it to the end of the day, right? So if you place an order to buy or sell a mutual fund at 10 a.m. and then I do it at 2 p.m., we're getting the same price. With the closed end fund, You may, if your market's up, you can just get out of it at the high and then even if the market turns later in the day, you still sold it. Same thing if you want to get in. Maybe the market's down and you want to get in. You buy in at the low. And then if it goes up, you're actually going to benefit from that. You could buy it at 10 in the morning. It goes up. You could sell it two hours later and sell it for a gain. Boom. Open-end funds are for long-term. Remember that. So open-end funds are more for long-term. They're not for trading. Close-end funds and ETFs absolutely can trade. Now, what's interesting is that, interesting to me, is it a closed-end fund can trade above or below the NAV. Remember, open-end funds are NAV plus a sales charge, which we'll get to. Closed-end funds can trade above or below, right? So you can buy, you can sell it at 980, buy it at 1002, even though the NAV is 10. The NAV doesn't really matter as far as the intraday trading. It does matter because that's the value of the fund and they do calculate one, but that has nothing to do with your price, okay? 
So it can trade above or below, and it can trade way higher, right? That's one of the ways you can tell if it's a close-end fund or not. If the offering price is below the NAV, then you know it's a close-end fund, can't be an open-end, because open-end, the lowest price you could ever buy if it's a no-load, is NAV. If it Also, if the offer price is really high, like 8 or 9, 9% 9 higher than the than the bid than the NAV, then you know it has to be a closed end fund. Because remember, the max sales charge on an open end fund is eight and a half percent. Okay, so let's get into the pricing of an open end fund. I just wanted to show you the differences now. Okay, so here we are. We have the NAV of 10, we have a POP of 1050. So, how do we know what the sales charge is? Well, this one's easy, right? So you take 10. You take the difference between the two, and that's a sales charge. That's going to be fifty cents. Because remember, when you buy a mutual fund, it's always NAV plus the sales charge equals POP. NAV plus the sales charge equals POP. I love that. Now, what if I said, how do I do the percentage? Remember, the percentages of the POP they have to do it this way because they want to screw with you. The percentage of the POP. So we have to do fifty divided by ten fifty if we want the count. We want to figure out the math. So let's do this. 50 cents divided by 10.5 is 10 is 0.47. So this is going to be 4.7%, which is well within the range of 8.5%. So that one's easy. I like that. That's easy. So now let's try another one. Boom. Uh, okay. Let's let's do it. Let's say we have an NAV of I wish I could spread it. NAV of 10 bucks. And I have a sales charge of, you know, 30 cents. That's easy, right? We know it's going to be 1030 as my POP. Awesome. If they want to know the percentage, you're going to do 30 divided by 1030 to get whatever that is. It's going to be a little under three. Okay. Now, let's say the NAV is 10. Let's shrink this so it doesn't screw anything up. And let's say instead of giving us a sales charge, a dollar amount, okay, let's say they give us a percentage. So let's say the sales charge percentage is 4%. Oh my God, what the hell do I do? How do I figure this shit out? Because it's four, because we know it's not 4% of 10, because it's 4% of this, but we don't have that number. How do we do it? Well, we take out the handy dandy calculator and we do 10 divided by 100 minus or one minus the sales charge. So we're going to do 100 minus four equals 96. That's 96%. So we're going to do 10 divided by, let me do 10 divided by 96%. That gives me 1041. There we go. That's so easy, okay? So if they if they give you a sales charge percentage, okay? If they give you a sales charge percentage, I can't type for shit, then you just do, you do take 100 minus that sales charge and then divide the NAV by that number or do NAV divided by that number, however you want to say it. It's going to be 10 divided by, well, I'll just put it here so I don't look like an idiot. But I am an idiot, but just so we don't have it confirmed. That's going to equal... 10.41, okay? 10 divided by 0.96 equals 10.41. Boom. Now, we okay with that? I like it. On to bigger and better things. So that's easy. So now, let's say, okay, in case you got one of these questions, which cannot be an open end, right? Because we know an open end has a max of 8.5% sales charge. So if we have an NAV of 20, and then they say the offering price is one of these. So we can pick a Roman numeral. Two of these cannot be open end. Okay, so how do we figure that out? Well, we know that you can't buy below the NAV. So we know this is one of them. So now the question is, which two are the others? Now, really, if you're really in a rush, you just pick the, one with the other one with the highest offering price and you go, because that's probably it. But let's talk about why. So here, this is 20 bucks. So that's fine. That's a no load. It is what it is. But then jump over here. This is 25 bucks. We'll come back to that. Let's go to number four. Check that out. 2150 offering price, NAV of 20. So that gives me an, a sales charge of $1.50, right? So I'm going to do $1.50 divided by 20 equals 7.5%. We're totally cool. That could be an open end. So let's try this one. This is a $25 offering price. The NAV is 20. The offering price is 25. That's $5. Five divided by so which cannot be an open end? So the NAV is 20 bucks. The offering price is one of these and two of these or three of these or whatever it is cannot be an open end. So let's figure it out. First of all, you know that you cannot buy below the NAV. So this, this, can, this cannot be an open end. So that's one of them. So I'm going to say yes. 
that can that cannot be an open end. That has to be a close end. Because if you see an offering price below the NAV, can't be an open end. Now, 20 is at the same price. So that can be an open end or close end. So that's not one of the answers. Now, it's one of these two. Now, when I'm in a jam and if I'm in rush, I'll just say, okay, I'll take the highest price because that's probably it. But let's do this. So how do we figure this out? 2150. So we have to figure out what the sales charge is. So 2150 minus 20, 21.5 minus 20 equals $1.50 divided by 21.5 equals 0.69%. So that's good. That can be an open end fund. So we're going to say that's not one of the answers. Now let's jump to 25. 25 is the offering price. 20 is the NEV. $5 is the uh, sales charge. So 5 divided by 25. Because remember, it's always out of the POP, not the NAV. That gives me a 20% sales charge. That is a no good. So that has to be one of the answers. So it has to be two and three. So if they ever they ask what cannot be an open end fund or what has to be a closed end fund, they could say either way, it's either going to be the NAV below, the POP below the NAV, or the POP is way higher, more than 8.5% higher. I mean, you can ballpark it. We can just do what I did. Figure out the sales charge, divide it by the bigger number. Hope that helps a little bit. That's a little quick understanding mutual funds and how it works and how the NAV doesn't get affected, how to buy into them with the NAV versus the sales charge versus closed end funds. I have other videos I'll put in there that explain it deeper. Thank you very much for listening. Guys, please like, subscribe, and share this shit, baby.